Welcome to the ninth installation of What If Civilization Restarted. Before we start, I want to tell everyone who didn't see the post in the community tab that there's now a website, so click the link in the description. Now back to the video, in case you forgot, in the last episode we focused on the Americas and introduced Alni, Tishtan, Baratiko, Dapavi, Koso, Regaria, Laimu, Rastarak, Kanij, Abella, and the Solna Kingdom. Today, we're going to be going all over the world, so buckle up. And without further ado, let's begin. Resuming where we left off in North America, Ramistria is founded, named after the highly traveled road between Tonionis and Kanij. They expand to the Mississippi River to further integrate themselves with Northern American trade. A group of farmers from Tonionis leave with dreams of creating a great empire. They claim an extensive amount of land that many had little interest in, calling it the Laxalrithan Empire. Soon, their neighbors realize the potential of the land and devise plans to conquer it. The only successful gain was from the Abellans, who turned the young kingdom into a puppet state from which they could extract resources. Years later, Kanij invaded the empire, attempting to take it from their sister state. They won various battles in the south, yet failed to progress in the north. Their most embarrassing defeat was the Battle of Ithrain, where the Kanijian army created a spearhead into the enemy territory but soon became cut off, forcing members of the Spearhead to surrender. About halfway through the war, a strong nationalist movement formed amongst the Lathrixen civilians, who pushed for independence from Abella and Kanij. With the two states preoccupied with fighting each other, the nationalists banded together and launched a surprise attack, almost wiping out the two nations' armies. Abella and Kanij were forced to sign a peace treaty and respect the Laxrithan authority, land claims, and sovereignty. To the east, a Kurzian exploration team lands in North America, founded in Keanu. The natives living within the colony were forced to either apply citizenship or leave. Many natives did not respect the Kurzians and left, creating the new nation of Panunia. To the south, Rastra continues to expand, attempting to take most of the east coast before their neighbors can. Meanwhile, Tonionis takes more of the gulf and creates a border with their ally Rastra. Down south, the Rimmerland Isles expand west to create a land border with Reveria. Even further south, Simduria continues to expand, consuming more of the Amazonian rainforest. For years, five kingdoms had tried to conquer the British Isles. These kingdoms had been isolated from the outside world due to the European superstitions that the Isles were haunted, which stemmed from horror stories inspired by the miserable weather. Eventually, viewers were sent explorers to the Isles who were cast off by the Reveal Kingdom, further enforcing the distaste for expanding to them. Little did they know that the Reveal King was fascinated by the NPC's existence and wanted to form his own interpretation of the Alliance. To do so, he would have to break apart the Breedland Kingdom, who would gain control over most of the Isles and believe that they had the right to be the sole ruler. He reached out to Juthenberg, an unofficial Audenburg colony. The Juthen were more than happy to join a war against their long rival. The Jew then begged Audenburg, asking for aid, which they eventually agreed to, hoping that they could bring the British Isles under NPC control. Ruthemian intelligence intercepted the message and alerted Red Alliance authorities. Eventually, it was agreed that aid should be sent to Knoxford so that they could take over the Isles and enter the Red Alliance. The Bree were quickly put to the test as the two parties tried to invade them. With no other option, they were forced to reach out to the Knights Union a group of mercenaries and corrupt warlords occupying the majority of Ireland. With the Union's help, the Reveal Kingdom was quickly pushed out of Ireland. The Reveal made many, many attempts to land back on the island, but failed each and every time. In the north, the Knoxford Kingdom was making substantial progress in their invasion of Breland, but came to a halt after shifting focus on Juthenberg after the Rod Alliance sent orders for them to target the source of pro-NPC movements on the Isles. With the majority of the Knoxford army in Juthenburg, the Bree managed to regain control over some of their land. The Reveal soon became preoccupied with the Knights' Union now landing on their coast. Unfortunately for them, Juthen was in the middle of a civil war and had to surrender, leaving Reveal alone against the Knights. They put up an honorable fight and never surrendered, but in the end, they lost. The Knoxford King agreed to end the war with the Bree, keeping the land that they occupied. The Bree offered the Knights Union a chance to join them as one union, and they agreed, in return somewhat for independence and control over all of Ireland. The Juthen Civil War ended several years later, with the Oddish beating the Knoxfords. However, the nation was still divided. Desperate for political stability, they joined the Breland Union. 
It reveals Sumigan trading with the NPC, sparking controversy within the Union. Some wanted to stay neutral, others wanted to join the Alliance. Over time, neutrality became associated with being pro-Red Alliance, and thus pro-Noxford. Not wanting to side with their rival, the Berlin Union was forced to join the NPC. With the Karuzan Horde gone, the Karnashians were free to grow and expand. At the end of this age of expansion, Karnashian had reached the Caspian and Black Sea, even bordering Maroon, their puppet, which also expanded and had reduced occupation. This was all in hopes of one day creating a positive relationship between the two nations. To celebrate their great expansion, the Karnashians renamed themselves to the Karnashia Empire. To the south, Africa is hit by a great famine, leading to many Africans becoming desperate to find a new home. Many were skeptical of going to Europe due to the political turbulence and threat of a great war. A self-proclaimed prophet from Karnashia named Hingis played off those fears and led a third of these immigrants to the Middle East telling his followers that they would be safe from the coming war under his rule. To solidify his position as leader, he named the new nation after himself. Nylaria finishes its NPC-funded canal, connecting the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea. In return for funding the canal, the NPC required that they not allow the Red Alliance to use it. Subsequently, the Sejude Trail is basically nullified due to the canal, pushing Sejude into irrelevancy and poverty as Nylaria grows rich. A second North Peace Conference is held in Krothenburg, and various NAM members also attend, such as Lyopoxic, Norlandia, Slyla, Karnagia, Prakia, Yoroga, and the NPC-occupied Harushia. Lyopoxic is granted authority and supplies to expand to the north and create a shared border with Norlandia for better trade and coastal access. Slyla is greenlit to annex more land so that they can gain a border with the URN. Ursia then requests to incorporate more land north of the Peloponnesus, with little opposition from other members. Elysia expands further into Scandinavia to increase control over the Straits to the Baltic Sea. And finally, Azuria claims land north of them and Sardinia, and Ottenberg takes Corsica in return. Meloria and Prakia are encouraged to expand and create a shared border. Ursia is allowed to expand into the remaining land due to overpopulation-related issues. The conference finally ends, with Prakia being formally entered into the Alliance. About a week later, Kirsten and explorers report finding another big island. This news leaks to the RA, and both alliances race to Australia. Both parties, aware of the low value of the island, still wanted to colonize it anyways, as a show of dominance. The NPC gets a head start by using the Nylaria Canal. The Breland's Union ships begin to fall apart from their lack of nautical experience and they're forced to land in Southeast Asia, instead forming their colony of Brasia, the name being the joining of Breland and Asia. The Azurians face similar problems and found a new Azuria earlier than they would have liked, but reaches Australia nonetheless. The Kersians take most of Western Australia, but sell the majority of it to Jandor after being offered way more money than the land's value. The Yadish split into two and create their colonies of North and South Crowland. At this time, Red Alliance shows up, and the URN are quick to form a colony neighboring Jandor. New Orthamia and Brasovov are founded on the eastern and unclaimed coast of Australia, with Orthamia even claiming some of the northern islands. Eurus steals some of the URN colony and sets up Fiornu. The Red Alliance is ready to declare war over unfair distribution of land, but Cursia offers to secede some land across the Prometheia ends their war with Apoya, fearing that the Europeans could be after their land next. Prometheian scholars believe that the only way that they could fend off the Europeans would be with allies. Then, Prometheans reluctantly send funds to Apoya to reincorporate their old land. The Prometheans and Apoyans then team together to create a new state, Jackian, and convince the neighboring warlords to form a union, creating Manolia. Coincidentally, the Smealanders are also expanding around this time, leading to disputes over who should have control over the Korean Peninsula. In the end, Smeelan gives up some of their islands in return for the entire peninsula. Back in Europe, Rysovov finishes claiming land connecting them to the Pacific Ocean. The Smeelanders become vocal about their distaste of Rysovov taking so much land so quickly, believing that land should be grown into. To prove their point, they annex parts of undeveloped parts of eastern Rysovov. To their luck, the Rysovov didn't care and let them keep land in return for not invading anymore. Far west, the rest of the Red Alliance becomes inspired by Brasovov's great leap in size and expands as well, willing to put as much money as it takes to develop more land. 
Crosnia expands to the Caspian Sea, with Amy expands into the remaining eastern land. Lavin expands into the remaining land, and to finish off the expansions, Crosnia begins their long-awaited invasion of Crenatia occupied Maru. Using the element of surprise, they are quick to retake the land. Wanting to continue their success, Crosnia makes their way to Crenatia, who is already prepared for their attack, not letting them cross the border. The Crosnians are forced to retreat into Maroon. The following night, a surprise attack is performed by the Crossian Navy, attacking from the north. They land in the more undeveloped parts, allowing them to move quickly to the new centralized capital. The Brisevog Navy begins an attack of their own, landing on the Crenatian Empire through the Caspian Sea. The eastern half of the Crenatian Empire quickly fell into the Red Hat Alliance's hands, and with the main force of the Crenatian army occupied elsewhere, the Crossian army of Maru managed to cross the border and take most of northern Crenatia. Meanwhile, the URN's army lands on Cyprus, quickly taking it, then moving on to the mainland. Unable to sustain fighting three countries at once, the Empire falls and becomes occupied by the Red Alliance. Soon after, Rathami declares war on Norlandia, sending fear and shock through the NPC, as the Red Alliance had just broken the peace treaty that required Lyopoxic, Norlandia, Slyla, and Uroga to all be neutral. The Red Alliance argued otherwise, saying that they had no plans to make the country of Norlandia part of their alliance before its land to be annexed by Rathamia. The war started with Rathamia launching an attack on Norlandia's claims, which are quick to fall. With their high morale, they managed to create a faster spearhead into Norlandia, which the Norlandian forces focused on. Meanwhile, the Rathamians used this as a distraction to land their navy onto the Norlandian coast. The Norlandians became contested in the battle for Kurthor but won it on the second day. Lyopoxic begins sending military aid, and the Rathamians are pushed back into Kurthor. Rathamia calls in Krasnia's aid in response, forcing Norlandia and Lyopoxic to spread their forces, and allowing Rathamia to win the second battle for Kurthor. From here on out, the Norlandians and Lyopoxics failed to stop the Red Alliance from reaching New Europa, Norlandia's capital. With the capital in Rathamia's hands, Norlandia is fully annexed into Rathamia. The NPC knows that they must declare war on the Red Alliance, but try to strike a second emergency peace deal in hopes of avoiding a war far more devastating than the world has ever seen. The Red Alliance refuses to return Norlandia's sovereignty, and the NPC is left with no choice but to declare war. 